the Boktang Palace Museum. The museum was built from 1893 to 1903 and was one of the four royal residences of the Bogtan, known as the Green Palace. Buddhism was introduced to Mongolia three different times. The earliest introduction came through India and occurred during the periods of the nomadic empires Shanyu, Nirung, Turuk, Uyghurs, and Mongolian Khitans. The second introduction took place during the period of Chinggis Khan and his immediate successors up until Taran Tumur Khan from the 13th to 14th century. The third introduction began in 1578 and is called Buddhist Renaissance period. During the years between 1639 to 1924, eight Bogjavtsnam reincarnations were all recognized as the head of religion on Mongolia. Within Buddhist hierarchy, the Dalai Lama is the highest leader, followed by the Panchen Bogd or Panchen Irtin, and the Bog Japtsnab. These Hotok reincarnations were regarded as living gods and revered by many as such. Of these, the Bog Japtsnabs were especially important in Mongolia. They were extremely impactful to the structure of the nation. Bogtang was the only theocratic ruler of Mongolia, meaning that he was head of state and head of religion. And he was also the last king of Mongolia. After his death in 1924, the palace was converted into a museum in 1926. And since then, it has been 100% conserved and is the only authentic palace museum in Mongolia. Made by Mongolian traditional builders and architects, the Bogtan Palace Museum consists of two parts, summer temples and the winter palace. The seven summer temples are comprised of the following, the Maharaja's Temple, the Temple of Aplix, the Temple of Thangkas, the Temple of Many Deities, the Library Temple, and the Labran Temple. The Winter Palace consists of a two-story European-style building. This is the Yanpei Shield Wall, located in front of the museum. 
It was made from blue brick and was meant to protect the palace from otherworldly evils and dangers. It is one of the three shield walls located in Mongolia and can only be built with special permission from the Manchu Qing Emperor. This is the Peace and Happiness Gate. It was built to symbolize independence from the Manchu Qing Dynasty rule. It was built without a single nail and instead used interlocking wood. The king entered through the central gates while the monks and nobles followed through the side gates. The Gate of Peace and Happiness was built to memorialize the proclamation of the eighth Bogjavtsandam, sunlit and eternal, as theocratic king of Mongolia from 1912 to 1919. The gate was built without single nail. Instead, it consists of 108 interlocking wooden pieces. It is one of the five monuments held together by interlocking puzzle pieces in the world. the first of the seven glorifying temples, called the Maharaja's Temple. It contains the four guardian kings made from paper mache. This temple is meant to cleanse and purify you as you walk through it. The temple was built in 1903 and features four Maharajas that sit in guard over the Buddha inside. There are four continents in the mythical religion. Each continent has a legend that protects the multicolored kings from both the seen and the unseen. Mahran is Maharaja in Sanskrit. Maha means great and Raja means king. When the Maharaja is worshipped in the temple, it protects the temple from enemies by eradicating internal and external barriers. When people enter the Maharaja temple, it says that bad things, both visible and invisible, fall away. This is the Temple of Apleks. Apleks 
is a Buddhist art form that uses the layering of silk, gold threads, and precious gems. Chilling got a game, but I'll just jump soon. Matin, Matitana, Manano, Tata, Harnto, Matinta, Matit, Hamptang, Atan Bogotana, Bogotang, Gurne, Atan Dostolt, Mutagi, or the Sandra Car, or I'll jump the Santa Tiles. Artille, Atan Sakhon, some heat, Yan Jarang Hartitan, Tokin Odwa, Tokman, Mongolian Tokman, Terian Saran, Mana Terkin Tarvajar Law, Ingot Muchata, Doctor Narod. Tarhnu the Borhatman, Unktek, some hit the Manatan, Dong Trot, Odin, Julian, Tokin, the Sachi, Ludwitten Tarikla, Tangat, Muncha, the New Mongol Tort, Ness, Halor was not heaven, Manahan, Manan, Ostendalon, Jorachik, Sadolatam, Unku, Manan, Mongol Turtamal, Unku, Jim, Jink, Mongol, Lamder, Tok, Soidi, Hatril, Jerkin, Banagi, Dolata, Yaka Hangam, Jite, Harold Touch, Munch, Mongol Seaman, Mongol Turiman. Одон мөлөө цаашид хөгжин бадрж хүн ардан тавтай тавлон байха гэдэг итгэл төгөлдөр байна. The art of silk applique was the leading trend in the early 19th and 20th centuries. The creations featured high-quality artistic designs made by famous artists. The artists were able to add creativity through colorful silks and satins. A welcome change from the black and white photographs of the era. These appliques are a great example of how the artistic imagination and the art of the Mongolian people echoed Buddhist art. Том дээр тулсаас ирээд Монгол улс дээр ч бүг таны энэ сайхан ордныг одоо тайран үжилээ. Сүм бүл одоо их хуучин төвхтэй түүхэн улваатай ийм сүм хийд юм байна. Одоо энд бас газар бүгдээс улс газар орно бүгдэлхийн хөвчөөн энэ газар орноос бол одоо их үжиж сонирхож яха судланж Сорулж яг улсууд бас одоо их олон байх юм байна. Нэгд бол одоо энэ буг таны ордноны үжиж сонирхон хоёр дул одоо манай үндэсний нэг нэг шашин хөтлөгийн энэ нэг ухаан гүдөөний бас одоо жив талаас нь ойлгож мэдэж явах. Одоо ийм нэг зорлогтой. Ийм одоо хөчний мянган гажрын алсаас ирээд бол одоо бас өөрийн хүсэл зэрлэг юм бол өнөөдөр ирж одоо бурхан from the monarchy of the early 17th to 20th centuries, we learn about Mongolian religion and culture. We see these things through a variety of exhibitions held here. The most recent exhibition presented to the public was named Treasure Fund. This is the Temple of Tankas. Tankas are a Buddhist art form which uses mineral paint made from crushed precious stones and gems. The monks and the Han servants stayed in this temple while the Bogtan performed religious rituals. The gods in this temple are works from the 18th and 19th centuries. Vraiment un travail. Pour dire que c'est un travail d'une hier, t'as l'air. 
маш нарийн хийцтэй бүтээлүүд. Бидний хувьд энэ олон бурхдыг ялгах хэцүү ч үнэхээр урлагийн гайхамшигт бүтээлүүд юм. Дараагаар нь энэ их зургнууд таалагдсан. Энэ мөзэн иргэн тойронд ийм их орчин үеийн барилга баригдсан нь харамсалтай. This is a Nadon temple, which currently displays Buddhist musical instruments. But it was originally where monks and groups of up to 60 large religious ceremonies. And here we have a trumpet and a gong, which were used to symbolize the beginning of religious ceremonies. Over here, we have cymbals, trumpets, and in the middle, we have a damaru. And here, we have more cymbals, a trumpet, a smaller gong, and bells, and a vajra, and a, vajra, and a conch. So here, we have blessing sticks, which are extended to the people for almsgiving. And here are the deities that represented longevity. Uh, the first time I came to Mongolia was nine years ago. And then uh, I arrived this week for a second tour. I think uh, all museums are important. They uh, capture the uh, history of a country. So this museum is doing that. Uh, uh, some uh, Mongolian leaders, religious people were here. And uh, it's good to recount and uh, have for a record what they did. So this museum does a very good job with that. This is a temple of many deities, which displays Buddhist art made from various artistic methods, including wood carving, bronze casting, and paper mache. After the Green Palace was built, the eight box received representatives from local communities here. In Mongolia's theocratic period, it was renamed as the Buddhist Deities Foundation Temple. Today, it displays many Buddhist deities of the early 17th to 20th centuries. This is the library temple, which once housed thousands of religious sutras and was used by the Bhaktang for his religious readings. In the library temple, more than 8,000 religious sutras were kept. Foreigners who traveled to Mongolia during this period wrote that the books of Babylon that contained secrets and mysteries were stored in this very library as well. Most of them are currently in the State Central Library. In addition to some of the scriptures, printing method, and stupa replicas are also on display. Here we have examples of the sutras he read, and if we look over here, there is a seat that he used to read on, which was made out of ebony wood and has a mat made out of lion skin. The frame inset with precious stones such as coral, turquoise, and agate was meant to provide luxury and finery for the green tara inside.
For here, we have the deity Amitayus, which was made in three different regions, Poland, Tibet, and Inner Mongolia. And even though all three were made in strict accordance to Buddhist canon, all three of them display different characteristics and features. The Labron Temple, where only Bogtang and his highest monks were permitted. It currently contains masterpieces made by the first Bogt Zambat. The Green Palace was built using a unique technology that makes it cool even during the heat of summer. The word Labron means main temple. The temple has three floors. The third floor was reserved for the worship of Bogotan's main deity, Achurder. The most interesting presentations, I guess, were the buildings themselves. Just the architecture is so different to anything we have. Um, and also just the amount of um, statues and how they lived here. Like, they were all very interesting. But I think to see how the king and queen lived and um, the furniture they use and the clothing they wear and all their statues and the strong ties to Buddhism, it's, it's very interesting, but of course the first impression is the buildings. Bogotan's Winter Palace the Winter Palace was built in 1903 from a Russian architect, Blue Prince. The top floor of the Winter Palace was where foreign and domestic dignitaries and officials were received. It also contains the rooms where the Bogotan and the Queen rested. The Winter Palace displays many exhibits such as Queen Dandogdotlam's dragon pattern silk dale, the infinity patterned dale, the Queen's head dress, tobacco pipe, prayer beads, peacock feather vest, chair and bed made of ebony wood, and a vanity table. There are wall decorations presented by Chinese craftsmen in the Bogtan's Buddhist ritual clothing and regalia as well as protective deities, and ornaments made of ivory. Here you can also see the Bogtan's nine dragons dale, a beaver skin hat, a cording vest, a silk vest with the same symbol, a pearl trimmed crown, and a vest made of 80 sables that belong to the Undurkigen Zanotar. There's also a dale made of sable which was worn by the Bogotan when he was proclaimed ruler of Mongolia. Bogotan's snuff, knife, stationery, the king and queen's official throne seats, and the state stamp are all preserved here. The Bogotan Ceremonial West, which was made with 22,000 pearls, is preserved here, too. The Bogotan kept quite an exotic collection of animals, including monkeys, parrots, and even an elephant. In 1901, a taxidermy animal collection was created that featured animals from every corner of the world. One of the most important historical sites is the museum, 
We have visited the Bogtan Palace Museum and the museum's exhibits truly display the history of Mongolia. The museum is open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day of the week. Ticket price, adult 8,000 tukruk, student 3,000 tukruk, children 1,500 tukruk. Well, I think uh, Mongolia is a place everybody should come if they have a chance. Uh, they can see some uh, the beautiful national park and, uh, of course, eating the Mongolian food and several fantastic museums here. So it's, uh, the Mongolian people have been very friendly. So uh, it's a, I, I perceive it as a very safe place to be. So I think it's a good place to come and relax and uh, enjoy a different culture and some uh, different food. And I think people would have a very good time if they came and enjoyed my life.